G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy today, continuing a series I'm doing where I take an individual draft prospect from the upcoming draft on November 20th and give a short snapshot video on who they are as a prospect. So far in the series, I have done Bo Allen, I've done Toby Trevalia, and today we're doing Xavier Lindsay. But by all means, let me know in the comments who your request is to do next in this series and I'll take it on board. By the way, if you wanna see these videos, click on the top right corner of this video. I'll attach a link to a playlist where you can find all of this and of course, members of this YouTube channel will have early access to these videos. So let's talk about Xavier Lindsay. He's actually quietly become possibly my favorite prospect in this year's draft. And perhaps I just really like his attributes, but also I feel like he's a little bit underrated, a little bit slept on in this year's draft in terms of what he's been able to produce so far in his junior career. So 183 centimeter outside midfielder from Vic Country, and he spent a fair bit of time off a halfback flank as well as a sort of release player. But I don't think there's too much doubt this guy can play midfield at the next level in my current opinion. So very high IQ player and a very high meters gained player. He covers the ground really well. He's got great work rate and endurance, great skills, good versatility as well, can play on the inside and the outside. And again, like I said, has played that role of halfback, but I feel like he's deployed at halfback, not because he's not a midfielder, but because of his decision-making, his skills, his meters gained ability. These assets make him a very well-rounded prospect. He's fairly well accomplished already. I mean, he won the Morris medal for the Coates Talent League Best and Fairest Award. In the Coates Talent League, he had 23 and a half disposals, five and a half clearances a game and over five inside 50s a game as well. And I know that one of them was injury affected. He wasn't at the draft combine because in his last game, he did a PCL injury. But overall, like I said, we're talking about a player with fairly high production and those clearance numbers, while it's the Coates Talent League and not necessarily, you know, state league seniors or the national championships, it does imply an ability to win the inside footy as well. Now you don't have to be an inside mid to win clearances, but if you're averaging five, that obviously implies an ability to do it fairly consistently. So yeah, to round out his strength, like I said, 70 meter transition player, really good work ethic there. His ball use is really rock solid, particularly in short. He does have a penetrating kick as well, but he's quite tidy with his short range kicks as well. Super consistent, doesn't really have too many bad days. And he's also stood up in some big games. In that final game of the championships between country and Metro, he had 30 possessions and was considered best on ground. Like I alluded to before, inside and outside balanced, which makes him a very well-rounded prospect. He can win contested footy, although it's his A game to be that first receive player on the outside. Good kicking penetration. He's versatile, like I said, but also played halfback and work rate. And that also covers off some defensive running as well, which can be a drawback to many midfield prospects. So in terms of weaknesses, I'm not too sure what to highlight here, because like I said, he's pretty well-rounded. I mean, he's not necessarily a, a big aerial threat in terms of contested marking or anything like that, but it's really not the sort of style he plays anyway. I suppose over time, he will continue to evolve to demonstrate that inside midfield ability because he is primarily a wingman or a loose defender as well. So is that another drawback you want to say? When he's a defender, he really is more that release option other than say a Trevalier who is a genuine one-on-one -on -one defensively minded player. But I think at the next level, what we're really talking about is probably an outside midfielder with really good offensive weapons. But I suppose, you know, like many prospects who are predominantly outside, he will continue to develop his inside game. That being said, he has done it at Coates Talent League. He also played in the midfield against WA in Claremont as well. And he had something like eight clearances in that game. So he's obviously not finding too hard to get on the inside and win his own footy. So who's a good player comparison? Well, I kind of think of Errol Golden a little bit now. Now that is obviously a generous comparison, but bear that in mind, that's going to be the case with every young prospect in this year's draft. It's kind of a best case scenario. And I am aware that the, of the prodigious talent that Errol Golden has, but stylistically, Errol Golden can win his own clearances, but ideally you don't necessarily need him to. You want him to be that release player receiving on the outside and getting the ball inside 50. And both Golden and Lindsay do this pretty well. I don't know if he has the endurance base of someone like an Errol Goulden, but stylistically, I think that is a fairly decent fit. Where does he go is another interesting question here. So again, I've read a variety of different opinions and draft rankings. Some have him in the late teens. Others consider him a genuine top 10 pick. You'd think at best, he probably comes into calculations at the back end of that top 10. And on draft night, St. Kilda's first pick could be pick 10. So I've said in both of the draft profiles I've done so far, all those players are of a similar range and there are a lot of similarities between the three players I've talked about so far, those being Trevalier and Bo Allen. And Lindsay could be a point of difference second selection for one of those teams holding multiple picks in the first 12, which include Melbourne, Richmond, and St. Kilda. So the way I see it happening is all those clubs are likely to go genuine inside midfielder probably with their first selection looking at the talent pool. But he's another one of those players that offsets that type of selection really well with his outside game. And he's fairly relatively unique, I would say, in that draft range. There's not a lot of players like Xavier Lindsay 
in the top 20 of this year's draft at all. So it could come down to, to need, I suppose, a little bit. Which clubs would he be suited to? Again, probably one of those clubs looking to diversify a couple of selections there. Probably also any team that probably just needs some run and carry on the outside. And to be honest, I, I struggle to think of teams that wouldn't want that. Like I said, I don't see like a, a Melbourne or a Richmond using their first selection, even St Kilda, their first selection on a player like Xavier Lindsay. But as we get into the sort of back end of that top 15, which is around his range, clubs like West Coast, Sydney, Port Adelaide, Fremantle, so it's hard to imagine him outlasting those picks. You'd think he gets taken in the top 17. If he's still available there past Fremantle's pick 17, I'll think any team is getting a bargain there. But anyway, guys, that is my take on Xavier Lindsay. In my opinion, one of the most interesting prospects in this year's draft and quietly hoping he gets to the West Coast Eagles as an Eagles fan. But let me know in the comments what you think of him. And of course, request any plays you want to see me do next in this video series. I hope you're enjoying it and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.